Uh, Professor Keene, I, I, can we talk about inflation for a moment? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, here in the United States, uh, we're experiencing inflation. It looks like this year it's going to be around 5 or 6% uh, when all is said and mm -hmm. done. And uh, there's a lot of hysteria around it. There are people who are suggesting mm -hmm. it's the natural rebound from, uh, you know, the austerity or the lack of demand, basically, during the COVID time, sort of like after World War II, there was an inflation. Um, others are saying, oh, my God, it's because the Democrats are spending too much money. We've got to stop them from spending money and helping out people. Although it's fine if they spend $700 billion on the military, but no, they can't spend money on people. And, and then there's mm -hmm. others who are saying, it's all the Fed. The Fed, haven't you noticed that since 2008, mm -hmm. the American money supply has exploded? What say you? It's a breakdown of the supply chain. Uh, one of the main reasons why we've had de uh, falling inflation since the 1980s is because of the relocation of production to third world economies like China, uh, which of course is no longer a third world economy. It's becoming uh, the, the major power on the planet. Uh, but their American capital, uh, in, in search of more profits for them and paying less for wages, was seduced into moving its production facilities, particularly to China. And then that meant that there was this enormous long supply chain as well. I think the, I'm holding my iPhone right now. I think that apparently there are parts in this, in this device from about 100 countries. Now, that, that is an incredibly fragile system. You wouldn't you know necessarily tell there had been this term uh, anti-fragility. That, that, that is an incredibly fragile system because if something goes wrong in one country, suddenly you can't produce an iPad, an iPhone. Now, of course, it's gone wrong in, in 200 countries. And, and that destruction to the supply chain is pushing up the costs and, re and reducing the supply as well. Plus, we also do have uh, households who have an enormous amount of money because the government ran a deficit. And by the government running a deficit, the savings accounts of Americans dra ra rapidly rise. And so they do have the power to shop as well. So there is that uh, remnant of demand pull. But the fundamental cause for the, for the uh, increase in prices is a breakdown in the supply chain. Are you in Australia experiencing the same kind of inflation we are here in the United States and for the same reasons? Not quite as bad. Uh, Australia is we've got a very small manufacturing sector. It sacrifices its manufacturing sector to expand its mining sector. Uh, but uh, not, So we have to import a lot of goods and therefore the import shortages do turn up. But I've seen nothing like the reports about the scale of, uh, of breakdown in the supply chain in America where you have so many containers on the wharf that you can't unload them fast enough and, uh, and, and you can't get the empty ones shipped back to China and so on. So it appears that this is striking the American economy more than it's striking the Australian, even though there is inflation here as well, but not as bad as America. Well, after George W. Bush put China into the WTO in December of 2001, which was largely unnoticed by Americans because it was right after 9-11, um, in, the, in the years that have happened since then, in the 20 years that have happened since then, uh, we have had 60,000 plus factories, not jobs, factories, uh, uh -huh. move from the United States to China. And yep. uh, have you seen a similar deindustrialization in Australia as a consequence of uh, China and the WTO? Yeah, uh, the, the, fundamentally what has happened is American corporations that used to produce locally now produce in China and ship out to Australia. And, uh, and it, but it is a, a dramatic deindustrialization of the West. And China has exploited that brilliantly. I was actually in China in 81, 82 for a business conference with journalists. And I took uh, journalists on a tour of the Shenzhen Free Trade Zone. We had it explained to us there that the, 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 the builders of the Free Trade Zone were exploiting a loophole in the American trade uh, laws that enabled an American company to re-export from a third world country and not pay tariffs on the import. And they're also, of course, exploiting low wages but they required the American company to have a Chinese partner, and within five years, the Chinese partner had to own 50% of the business. Now, you would, why would the American partner agree with that? Because the wages and costs were so much lower right. that he had 50% of the profits was much more than they were getting with 100% of the profits but paying American workers and American costs instead. That's amazing. It's amazing, too, that you were in Shenzhen in 1981. Louise and I were in Shenzhen in 1981. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we were, we, I had business in Hong Kong, and we just took one of these day tours over to, because it was the new experimental thing, you know? And uh, it, it was, uh, you know, it was just a little kind of uh, dirt town, a dirt road town in, in many ways, and they were just starting to it build was, the industry. Yeah. 
You know, I, 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 I think, actually, yeah, and yeah. now it's now it's the manufacturing center for the world. I think at the time there were just a few, you know, maybe maybe at the most a hundred thousand people there, probably less than that.